Hello everybody and welcome back to Divinity Original Sin the Enhanced Edition So we finally arrived at Hunter's Edge last episode So without further ado, let us enter First of all, let us speak to Horton My, you're still alive Way to beat the odds, Wanderer Oh, anything vital I need to know about Hunter's Edge? Yeah! Well, don't go round anger and immaculates if you want to keep your vitals intact. <laughs> okay. Though perhaps it won't be very long before they have a stab at one another's vitals instead. I have the feeling there's trouble brewing between the orcs and the humans in there. And who can blame them, really? Just ain't natural for them to consort, I say. Only good orc. Well, you know how the phrase goes. And who are you? Can't say I remember who I was before the change came over me. But these days, I'm a travelling trader of sorts. There's an immaculate necromancer in the village ahead. She's the one who brought me back from, well, wherever I was. She's an especially bright one, you know. Most necromancers can only revive a dead corpse into an animated one, but she manages to yank back some semblance of consciousness, too. I don't remember much, but the thrill of trade certainly calls to me. <laughs> Maybe I was a merchant in my former life. Who knows? These days, most undead are busy haunting Sicil or picking the way in the Lucula mines. But I keep a low profile and stay out of sight. I haven't been bothered by an Immaculate yet, and I hope to keep it that way. Okay, good. I'll take my leave. So, his story will become uh, more important in Hunter's Edge. Um, if I remember correctly, if I have the item, which I probably don't. <laughs> An intact finger! Just I don't know if I've still got it or sent it back to the homestead or is it in a bag? Let me just check these before we go any further. I wonder what the orcs want with all this boat. Make a chandelier most Yeah, uh, yeah let's have a quick look at Medora. <laughs> Maybe I haven't picked it up on this save. I did do it on last save. There is a question here which uh Let's the merchant here on the one in Sicy or the one on the beach. It lets them be set free and not finally to die and rest in peace. Oh, we'll get a bit further on and we'll see if I can do it. Right, let's talk to Jinjinxa. Jinx. Jinxiki? Jinxika? There we go. Uh, okay. Plus one I had. You can speak. You don't look like a tribesman or orc, but but I suppose I can't be certain. Then again, I've never heard of a dark soul gifted with the speech of the wild. Seems like Bear Daughter survived in a cat. That's her voice. <laughs> uh, tell me about yourself. Jinxica is my name, and until recently, I lived a placid sort of life among the people of Hunter's Edge. The baker might leave me a bit of milk left over from this breakfast. The barkeep stroked my back between filling glasses. I had many friends here, but none so dear as a little trio. A married pair and their daughter, employed by the wizard to keep his home. They spent many long hours squashing fleas that plagued me and shared their warm beds with me each night. If you come to this village to help and not to harm, you might be able to save those three kind souls from the orcs that have invaded. Ugh, such misery in our sad town. What do you know about the wizard? A kind but private man he is. He set up his home here several years ago, but never remained there long enough before jetting off to tend to some matter or other. The Dark Invaders seem very interested in him indeed. They've been skulking around outside the house since they arrived, but not even one of their filthy vermin can penetrate the wizard's protective enchantments. Uh, you say orcs invaded this place? Well, we know that. Would that an invasion were all! They destroyed every crumb of life they could find and sent their filthy rats to seek out those who evaded them. Each life they took infused their strange stones with power. Their queen glowed with delight as a parade of victims were slain before her. 
It was as though she was taking in a beautiful song. The human tribe came shortly after. They had their own supply of the glowing stones, and the Orc Queen took no easy liking to them. Still, it seems they are working towards some similar goal. They haven't destroyed one another... yet. Okay, what about the friends and the, the wizard servants? They've survived this carnage so far by concealing themselves most cleverly. I've done my best to guard their hiding place from the slime-bellied rats attempting to sniff them out. But I fear my efforts aren't enough. Until the village has been rid of vermin, those three sweet souls may be found at any time. So the orcs are using rats to their advantage. Savages by savages employed. The orcs have one among them. The rat catcher, they call him. Who claims to have trained rats to do his bidding. They've swarmed the place in search of hidden villagers. And unless every last one of them is split from tail to snout, they're sure to find my friends. But you're not like the brutes inside those walls. No. You approached me with hand, not boot outstretched. Perhaps, perhaps you could help me. With these rats running about, it's only a matter of time before my friends are caught. They must be squashed, every last one of them. I've done my best so far, but there are simply too many for one set of claws to handle. With your help, though, with your help, it could be done. The rats gone, my friends. Safe. I see you found another feline friend there. Hmm, oh, that bothersome old Tom. No, he and I are hardly friendly, much less friends. I've much more important things on my mind than him and his incessant pestering. Okay, thanks very much. I can slip through these walls as I please, but you'll need to find your own way into the village. And remember, my friend, Kill every last rat you find, or three dear souls will be lost. Log updated. Okay, follow the wizard. Hunting Hunter's Edge. Okay, we need to do something by killing the rats. Right. Where is he? There he is. Ah, who? Let's have a quick word. How can I help you, my friend? Uh, I've learned about the relationship between Zandalore and the Witch Sisters. You told me you had no idea about who, this, who the stranger in the inn could have been. Ah, uh, yes, that was a small fib on my part, I'm afraid. Zandalore is known as the Keeper of the Source, after all. And I didn't know how Source Hunters would react to my association with such a... colourful character. And what are you doing here? I'm watching on with weary eyes how the Immaculates strike again. They've gone from shedding blood among their own to recruiting orcs and cutthroats to do it for them. From what I can tell, the village of Hunter's Edge is this cult's most wretched victim. And what have you discovered about this place? It was once a quiet sort of village. Families and small-time merchants, mostly. Recently, it was targeted by a tribe of orcs waving the Immaculate Banner. Their leader, Grutilda, is known far and wide for her cruelty and cunning. She oversaw the murder of countless villagers and used their blood to fuel a great number of bloodstones. Once they were dead, they were reanimated as undead corpses and sent to work in the mines of Lakula. By order of Leandra, the orcs were joined by a tribe of humans from the northern peaks of Tanneroth. A band of male warriors are they, and they devote allegiance to their leader, Jarl. Jarl arrived with his own formidable supply of bloodstones, which means his tribe has been operating under directions from the conduit for some time. Where once they ransacked for base pleasure and material gain, now they do it by the will of the goddess. These are far from the blindly devoted Immaculates of Silverglen, however. The orcs and the humans here alternate between bitter fighting and hostile peace. Personally, I believe they're best exploited through their rivalry. 
get them to fight each other, and you can stand on the sidelines and warm yourself upon the flames. Okay, Xander lives in, lives in this village. Got any pointers for me? He has a residence at the far end of town. Though I have my doubts he's having people over for tea now that the Immaculates have landed. Know that Xandalore is wily, so beware. If a wizard doesn't want you in his home, you'll know it. Pity the intruder that heedlessly tries to waltz his way into that dwelling. Nevertheless, his house is the very place you'll want to search. The accumulated knowledge stored there is quite phenomenal, and beyond a doubt, one of Leandra's most urgent pursuits. <laughs> Are we really asking that question now? We found a teleport to Pyramid and later to see his bathroom. Didn't peg you for a peeping tomcat. What? I... I'd never. If you must know, I was merely checking up on Maxine, the mayor's cat. What a delight she is. The temperament of a tiger, the grace of a leopard, and the manners of a lady all rolled into one. A perfect puss, if ever there was one. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Ahu. I'll go now. Right, so let us continue with what we need to do, and that is checking all this stuff. My kingdom for a dry shirt! Anything else here? One there. Cheese. Yes, we will need cheese. I'll take that, I suppose. No, we don't want the pumpkins. You there, Flatlander. Stay at your business. Hmm. There we go. The immaculate. Just Come take that. Complain how the town's been taken, have you? Typical, you Flatlanders. Lucky for you, the goddess don't discriminate against cowards. Well, come quickly then. There's still townsfolk on the loose, and the chase has probably made them wild as cornered dogs. One might pop out of a bush and take an eye before you can shout your own name. Better you first check in with the higher-ups. You've got Jarl, the righteous leader of Weir the Mountain, and blood-stained Gratilda, queen dog of the giant toads. Trust me, you'll know her when you see her. Now scram, and make your introductions before word gets to them there's an intruder here. Okay, thank you. Log updated. We're in. What was it he saying about... Woolgraf. Well, has Woolgraf spotted something? Yes, he has. Feeling hot under the collar. Oh, treasures. I'm drenched. Uh, I can go to the homestead. Now, for some reason, we can't identify those, so we will take them. And it appears that I have to put the additional ore master. There we go, I should do it. Yeah, there we go. No, that's not very good. I mean, that's uh, a dagger, which we don't use. So, okay. Wasn't that good after all. Right, let's just head into Hunter's Edge. And start the quest to turn them against each other. Oh, it never rains, but it pours, eh? Check these sacks. Peace for now, Chief's orders. That other tusk's yours to keep in the meantime. That's so. Yarl can't stand the thought of his old tribe getting ripped to shreds, can he? Poor fellow. Living in fear under the great Matilda's boot. 
Hey, go on then, frog skin. We'll see you'll end up in the like a case. Is that what you call those thumbs on your toesies? <laughs> and there's a quest in here where we have to use that, if I remember correctly. To make mush, was it? Oh! Comrade, did you hear that? It sounds like these Immaculates are at odds with the local orc savages. We may be able to turn this to our advantage. I'll keep a sharp eye out for anything we could use to nudge these factions closer to chaos. If we can get them to destroy each other, we'll kill two birds without even having to pick up a stone. Nothing would please me more than seeing Hunter's Edge cleared of the scum that destroyed it. I may not be able to undo the past, but together, we can dole out justice for those who've suffered. That's very true, Midora, we can. Right. There's the well. Have we got a bucket on us? Do we have a bucket? No, but there was one in there. I'm trying to think ahead a little bit here. I'm, sh I'm, I'm almost positive that we have to uh, create a recipe in there, and it involves water. Book it with water. Uh, just might as well try this as well while we're here. Right. Mill, that's not working. Combine with. Go on then, frog skin. We'll see you end up beneath those boots. Is that what you call those thimbles on your toesies? No, it's invalid. Invalid. Okay. Maybe it is. Combine with, combine with. Pray to address your betters, are you? I ain't afraid of a single frog skin. Okay, I won't waste any more time on it. I'll have to uh, try and remember while we're doing all the other stuff. Keeping the peace for now, Chief Georges. That will the trust's yours to keep in the meantime. You know damn well I wouldn't touch anything of yours with a ten hand. I need to dry off. Living in the so for a moment. Go on then, frog skin. I could trust a big stupid old flag. Oh, let's have a quick like listen like over here, because I think we've got part of a quest here. Or am I, wrong? I say you're so stupid the key probably See, fell from your pocket while you were squatting over the latrine. Let's go in here out of the way. Warm as dragon's breath! One side! I ain't got time for chatting until I find the damn thing. Uh, what's this thing do you mean? The key to the armory, of course. Hasn't that frog skinned oaf been roaring about from here to the warehouse? The orc seems in a bit of a panic. You'd be too if you'd misplaced something of Gratilda's. I once saw her skin her own foot soldier alive for mispronouncing all mother. And he'd only done it after she'd knocked his teeth out for sneezing in her presence. What's worse is, the coward's blaming his troubles on me, only because I happened to be passing by when he noticed his armory key was missing. I'd tell him to piss off and be on my way, but he'd threaten to tell Gratilda it's me who stole it. Somehow, I doubt I'll get to tell my side of things before my head was shorn clear off. Now what do you know about the key? Not a damn thing in all the twelve hills of hell. This idiot orc has no idea where he's lost the damn thing. So he's taken to blaming me, a passerby. It's just like an orc to save his own skin by flaying someone else. All right. Thanks very much. Well, well, well. Thought you could get away with it, did ya? Don't look so confused, Pinky. The armory key. Bend it over. Let's discuss this key. It's small. Metal. Fixing a keyhole. 
Help us look or shove off, will ya? I've got to find the key before the old mama finds out it's missing. Or she'll carve a spare at me right task. Alright, thank you very much. To the armory is missing. It could prove Thought rather worth our time to it. find it. Source Hunter. Quick check down here. What's that? Art of Whiskey? Oh yes, this is the start of that quest I was just mentioning. Um, sack, yeah, I'll take the wheat, but I can't remember what to do with it. <laughs> Potatoes. Potato. Pot still. Oh no, no, that's for. That's Medora. Anything else here? Empty bottle, vial. No. Soak to the skin. I can't say for certain. I haven't got a hole in my pocket, have I? Darling, I do promise we'll make it out of here. Together. Ooh. That's the spirit. Yes, we've got to keep our own time. Pocket, have I? Our defenses even higher. Big ugly brute making me do his dirty time. work. I bet but his remember, skull would make a lovely above goblet above for Yarl's mead. Anything you might hear, I love you, and I, I haven't will. got a hole in my pocket, have I? Oh. Did we get an update for that? Yes, we did. Starcross lovers, okay. The plot thickens, we are getting somewhere. I forgot, I ain't too much of a painting chest. Into bottle, poisonous creatures. Alright, no need, no need to talk to them. We could do and promise that we weren't going to tell anybody, but we are. So I won't even bother promising. But I've learned to keep it quiet, and you've got to do the same. What do you do? Alright, I need to talk to the dog. The dog looks up at you with misery ridden eyes. Its tail doesn't wag, and when it tries to bark or speak, only silence reaches your ears. Poor thing, you can't speak, can you? The dog hangs its head, then looks north. Filled with fury, it barks noiselessly in the direction of the forest. Hmm, now oh, then. This starting Walgraf's personal quest line. With frantic, jerky motions, Walgraf writes the following message. Sorcery silence this poor dog's tongue. We must go north and find the bastard that did this. Perhaps he can undo it. Perhaps he knows a cure for himself. For me. Um, yeah, an, inter inter an interesting notion. If one can cast a spell, one can usually undo its effects too. An intense passion burns in Woolgraf's eyes. To find the dread silencer, to make him reverse his incantations, it is but a dream. But what if there is truth in it? There we go. Now we have the start of Wargraf's voice in the wilderness. Alright, let's talk to the skelly. Look here! Look at you! How I admire one whose head is lodged so firmly upon their shoulders, like a spire that rests upon the breadth of its foundations, one and indivisible. Not I, alas. I fare not so. For I may replace my battered cranium as jauntily as a wizard may his hat. Just consider some of these examples here before me. How I admire this one's kingly brow, that one's exquisite jaw, yonder one's deep-set sockets that held a warrior's eyes. 
Why make a permanent choice? Why not cater to the occasion as called for? I would. But for the question, where does the soul reside? And so I ask, where are you, O oh ephemeral soul? If in a tooth you may be pulled, if in an arm you may be broken, where are you, O oh delicate monstrosity? Why is it so important to know where in the body the soul resides? Surely you jest when you question this question's importance. Say I opt for that there fair-featured sovereign of a skull. What happens if another soul lies therein sequestered? If I play the part of the aforementioned wizard and swap its rugged lineaments for the feeble ones that are my own, who shall I become? I... Yes. Who is I, then? Were I sure that the soul houses within the chest, within one's little toe, for all I care, I would fret not so. But the certainty I long for remains as impossible to find as one specific raindrop in the rain. You, oh, I beg of you, have you not the answer? If you had a soul, you lost it the instant you died, buddy. You know, you're nothing but a soulless undead. <laughs> a bit heartless. You needn't worry, unlike our heads and our bodies, it is we and our souls that are one and indivisible. Hmm. Let's go with that. I concur. Pick a new skull if you want one. It's not going to change who you are in the least. But of course. Why was I so blind? The soul is not of the body, it is of the spirit. A new skull I shall have. But same person I'll remain. Oh, the agony of choice. I think I'll opt for the one with the kingly brow. <laughs> Log updated. Walgraf smiles as he looks on. To be or not to be. It's the perfect new skull. What? A friendly pat on the back places? tells you he approves of your the kindly reassuring was a dead man is solely safe. With an <laughs> watching a talking skull choose a head is like watching a dog do a backwards crab walk. Gives me the heebies. <laughs> uh, right, where are we up to? Uh, oh, we haven't checked that. I'll say that. So, oh, we've done that. Big ugly broom making me. I kicked a bread fry shirt. Quick. Sigh, what's a sandalore anyhow? <laughs> oh, a rat hole. Many rats scurry in and out of this hole. Where it leads is uncertain. Many rats scurry in and out of this hole. Where it leads is uncertain. Mm. Uh, wasn't there some poison cheese that we had? I thought we had some, but maybe I was wrong. Right, I've made some, made myself some uh, poison cheese. Let's split that. Maybe I have to speak to him first. Let the lost die that we may live. Come, let's have another round before I get too drunk to read the car. Hey, you, 
Stranger, how are you? You look like you could use a leg up against the competition. Isn't that so? And who are you? Nothing more than a humble trader, my lord. There's always plenty to get around after the raising of a village. I collect a bit of it and bring it to market. Tenebrium's awfully valuable, after all. No reason wares of this caliber ought to rot in some coffer. Um, what, whose coffer do you mean, Gritilda? I wouldn't dare steal from the old mother. A grave crime that it be. No, no. I simply pick from the loot. She hasn't quite noticed yet. Doesn't miss him in the least. This I promise on my honour as an orc. Oh, I see what you've got. With pleasure, my lord. One handed. Check. Let's see that last one. They are very good, are they? I don't think. A quick look. Scout at the door. Uh, 200. You know we have better, so you can hold on to your stuff. I'll take my leave, thank you. Holding loot from his so called all mother. Interesting. I'm in a lovely sight up there. All in a row. Shrug about myself, I did. Eight of the little darlings. A sweet sight I could ask for. So you're the executioner here then? I never give back care for the turn myself. I'm more of a caretaker, you see. The world's a wild place, unpredictable at best. But here, upon these gallows, there's peace, calm. I keep the order, and my little ones stay in line. Uh, by little ones, you mean the condemned? Condemned in this life, perhaps. But when they come to rest in my nooses, their sins are washed away. These old thieves and murderers and traitors, you see. After I've laid them to rest here, yeah, they're pure as angels. My Do you perform all the executions yourself? Most of them, yes. But that's far from my only order of business. Our great queen, Gretilda, is no stranger to getting her claws bloody. And she'll not entertain to pluck out a pair of eyes or look to their sideways. I handle all the dreaming dears when she's done with them all the same. Whether they're my little ones or hers makes no difference. I'm happy to bring them here to rest among me and mine. Uh, tell me more about these men and orcs. Oh, it should be an honor. Where are we to start? Uh, the one on the far left. All it came first, the little rogue. A human he was, and Gatilda ordered him hanged while Yar was out on the hunt. He was the first I got to tack in myself since coming to this town. Oh, Remember it like it was yesterday. The fussy little dear didn't want to go to sleep. No, no. Ticked and screamed, he did. But he started to calm down a bit after I strung him up, as I knew he would. And soon, he was fast asleep. And the second to the leftmost man. Oh, my little dear, no. He was a sweet one right from the start. A thief, I think he was in his past life. But he accepted what was to come easy as pie. The guards handed him to me, limp as a doll and shivering with fright. I strung him up nice and slow, so as not to worry the poor dear. I'm talking about the orc there, third from the left. He was one of Gratilda's. After some impertinent question or other, I believe it was. Impertinent questions. A plague among we orcs they are. Any more deaths than horn rod these days. Well, Gatilda dispatched him, but it was I who collected the great heavy deer and strung him up here. Gatilda said he'd be a warning to the others, but I think he's a great addition to the family, to boot. He does look a lovely sort of pale green colour, don't he? Like a dusty ancient jade. Beautiful. Uh, I'll take my leave, you disturbed little orc. It doesn't take much to send Gratilda over the edge, does it? Who'd have thought the greatest threat to the Immaculates would be one of their own? I'm warm as fresh apple Look, pie! there! Again, the Lost One struts by. Gratilda gives me plenty little deals to keep myself company. You aim so low, Ogma. Think of all the little deers you could have if you took matters into your own hands. You there, tell me, how's your vision? 
Any ailments in the liver or spleen? Lost ones are everywhere these days, after all. Tell me about yourself. I am a servant to the goddess, of course. One of the first among her enlightened in Revelon, and certainly the most devoted. I've scoured the region for unworthy souls, and am quite efficiently cleansing the land of lost ones, great and small. How much better the lost serve her as bone automatons. My expertise as a necromancer is unmatched, you know. I have a success rate is nearing 99%. And what about the 1%? They end up with their brains a bit, well, scrambled. You can find such a fellow opining over skulls somewhere around here. One of my more harmless false steps, I think. Okay, I'll take my leave. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> That's the rat catcher, let's have a word. No need for a supple young kitten like yourself here. My rats will find the villagers in no time at all. And who are you? Do you pretend not to know me, child? Surely you stare into my left eye each time you admire the full moon. But play coy if you will. The old mother called me here to find a certain tiny herd of sheep. Missing from her flock. Ah, the wolfish shepherd woman, she. I am world renowned for my ability to search and to find. Why, well, you might ask, feigning ignorance so that you might hear more of my lilting voice. Rats, kitten. Rats are always the answer. There's no hole they won't find, no stench that can be. There is no hiding from a rat, and so there is no hiding from me. I raise them, train them, lead them. I am their king, and my subjects will find those hidden villages in no time at all! Alright, tell me about these hidden villages. Lost lands, yes, flee the slaughter, naughty, naughty! I'm quite the spanking with my rats whisper to me where to find them. Yes, ah, perhaps I'll get my fill of my own private punishments first and foremost. The old mother believes those villagers, being the one time servant of the wizard, will know how to find him. Or at least how to break the enchantments shielding his house. Wicked. Enchantments, are they? Now tell me about the old mother. Our mother, yes. And we do suckle from the teat of her goodwill. No wonder so many of us starve. <laughs> An iron feast in an iron glove is our Gratilda. She doesn't tolerate failure any more than I tolerate a spring nymph stealing glimpses of me during bath time. No, no, Shira, I say. Get your fill at the God's Day Festival. <laughs> Why are we seeking the wizard? What? Do I look like his secretary? And even if I were, with my head in a tight little bun and my quill at the ready, the old mother doesn't share her every concern with me, you know. No. No, she whispers to her pillow at eventide, when only the feathers can hear her. What can't tell me about your rats? Perfectly disciplined, aren't they? They obey my every command, and when I die, they'll all leap into my grave so that they needn't be without me. Don't okay. No, they won't have it any other way. Okay, thank you, rat catcher. I'll take my leave. Log updated. Let's have a look. Uh, we have the back alley trade, right, we got that. Yes, we know that. We discovered that the rat catcher was using rats to search the village, but yes, we know that. Okay. Let's just check over here, make sure there's nothing that needs unearthing. No, that's all clear. Oh, God, I spotted something. Oh, I see, you spotted something. Let the lost die that we may live. Even 
Nice. Sneaking leadership, that's got to go to Wargraf. I'll send that to Wargraf as well. What the hell? Is that better? Yes, it is. It leads initiative, though. Oh, we'll take the armor. What is it that you so enjoy about death? Oh, I'm sport to him. Feeling hot under the collar. Oh. Need to talk to him with the right person. Uh, what have you got? Anything and everything left behind by vermin after we exterminated them. And I must say, some of these roaches have mighty fine taste. The old mother chooses first from among the spoils and the rest she grant to us to use or turn to profit. Okay. Anything decent? Shield specialist, no. We're waiting to fight the final battle. The time is nearly nine. No, that's not good. No, that's not bad. Uh, we'll leave that for the time being. I'll take my leave, thank you. Check these. Ooh, yeah, I love that. Who's that one? Stabic, that's a word. My augur's flame kindles at your approach. In the market for some magical artifacts and scrolls, are you? Oh, what sort of words do you have? Anything and everything left behind by vermin after we were exterminated them. And I must say, some of these roaches have mighty fine taste. The old mother chooses first from among the spoils, and the rest she grants to us to use or turn to profit. Two strength. Wow. Okay. Nope. That might be all right. Uh, I'm not going to buy it because I'm going to kill you anyway, so I'll probably be able to loot all that. All right, let's see what the Gatild is saying to this gentleman. I suggest you examine your own lyrics. Your lapdog Garrick is missing. Is he not? That. You may not know what it is to be trusted. You don't know what it is to be obeyed. Garrick is a son of the mountain, and he'd never betray me. And you trust so readily in the feeble hearts of foot soldiers. Oh, order of the old you mother. Huge discounts on you, magic balls. Do not cross the sword clan of Chalaroth. Or what? You'll beat your chests and howl about avenging the seventh moustache of Alfred Moomorph. Vermin could offer ah. such useful relics. Share in the plunder. Is that the end of that conversation then? Well, by the boot soles of Burl Boonhammer, what have we here? Another human in Hunter's Edge. State your business, whelp. The Immaculate sent from Silver Glen to assist. Hail, Immaculate. By the sickle of tear gut gouger, I'm glad to see another human face here in Hunter's Edge. Not yet another misshapen orcish snout. If you fancy keeping that human face of yours, I wouldn't take my cues from the chief of the mountain apes. I may have sworn to refrain from carving my name across his back, but yours, I do believe, is free for the taking. Okay, thank you. Regular ray of sunshine, ain't she? <laughs> Don't let her manners fool you, though. Her disposition may be dark, but her wit is bright. Bright and devious. Believe me when I tell you that she's plotting against us as we speak. 
and would have long given the order to spill our blood if she wasn't leashed by the orders of the conduit herself. But by the shield of the Stormbringer, she'll not outfox the sworn brothers of Tanaroth. And I sincerely hope she won't outfox the likes of you either. You belong to the Silver Glen tribe, I take it. Thought you were all holed up in Highbeheim. But it pleases me to see some of your number have come to Hunter's Edge. Yes, an outsider not as yet distrusted by the Orcs is exactly what I need in the matter of the missing bloodstones and the matter of the wizard's house. But let's talk in my headquarters over yonder, for by the beard of the Bear Slayer there are too many green ears around here. Alright, we will do that. And we will do that next episode, I do believe. I think we've gone well over the 30 minutes. I know sometimes these episodes are an hour, but this has all been talking, there's been no action. We're just setting up the scene, really, <coughs> in Hunter's Edge, getting the quest ready, and we will continue next episode. So thanks very much, folks. This is all Grace, signing off. <laughs>